So let's start with uh, some questions. Uh, who is a dev in the room? Please stand. Who is a product person? Things like that. Who is something else? Yeah, not of something else. And uh, who already created some dev tools with scripts for Salesforce or for anything? Great. Um, today we're going to talk about real data in dev environment from myth to reality. Let's start with myself. So I'm a Salesforce dev, the admin dev team leader at Meilleur Agent for four, four years and now at Aviv Group. And uh, I love doing some script and magic things for devs. You can have my LinkedIn, my GitHub, everything on my uh, Trailhead profile. So it's like Trailhead slash ID slash this thing. And let's go, let's start with our agenda. We have a lot of things to talk about today, but we'll be a bit quick on some topics, but you'll have all the slides at the end and you can read them and go deeper by yourself on it. Basically, we'll start um, why Avil Group needs Salesforce. We'll talk a bit of the context of, of that. And we'll define metadata, data. Then we'll go deeper on our goal and directly on the journey. I add some tips and then we'll see an example with a demo. And we finish with ideas of improvement and the Q&A. Let's start. It's not center, but um, Aviv Group basically is Meilleur Agent, Sodoge, Emo Web, and Emo World. So it's about rental agency, houses, apartments in France, Europe, and uh, France, Belgium, and Germany, so Europe. And we use Salesforce to do everything, um, mainly about managing the B2B process, accounts, the price catalog, uh, everything with payment, everything with contracts, invoices. And for that, we have a lot of Salesforce clouds. And a bit of context, eight years ago, we had our first uh, Salesforce user created. Five years ago, we had our first developer, which is still here, but not in the room because it doesn't want to see me. And uh, three years ago, we had our first deploy with a CI, a Git, and a SFDX. So now we can handle metadata quite well because we kept improving these last three, three years. And we have a lot of things. We have even pull of scratch logs. But the next challenge is having data in dev environments. But first, we need to talk about metadata and data. If we start with metadata, metadata is data that describes other data. In the Salesforce world, it will be fields, layouts, and even Apex classes and triggers. All that is considered as metadata. It's quite easy to handle. There's a lot of official and community-made tools. Fabian just entered, so he's the one doing quite some tools. And there's a lot of open source tools to, to help you manage that. And it's the main developer work to do Apex classes, triggers. So to conclude, metadata is just an easy Q timed cat. Now it's quite easy to handle. In the other end, we have Dala. Dala is money, but right now we don't care. Dala is what represents something from the real world into Salesforce via data model. For example, records of accounts in Salesforce represent rental agency from the real world. Data is why we develop things, because even if you have the best Apex classes, the fastest flow, if you have no data to, to handle, it's just useless. So data is more an untamed monster, because even when you think you're done with that, it still grab you to hell and make you suffer. But uh, we're going to be like Gandalf today. We're going to fight back, and we're going to win against this monster. And that's, that's our goal of our journey. The goal of the journey is the idea is to import data in a dev environment, and we want to first think why we want that. For example, we can test business use case directly in the scratch log or in the sandbox you're developing, so you don't have to wait until production to see that you have basic uh, errors. And you can also reproduce errors that you have in production and test multiple scenarios without damaging your production. It's also useful if you want to populate Sandbox with a lot of data to train a new sales team. 
doing it manually is slow, it doesn't really work, and uh, sometimes it's not even possible. So no one really do that. That's why we want a magic script to do all that for us. And now we're gonna talk about our journey. I won't give you a simple solution, uh, one way to go. This journey is more about a reflection of the issue you can face, the way you can solve this issue, and the journey will be specific to everyone. You, you need to path your own world through uh, that. If we start uh, this journey, we have, I have some disclaimer to say first. The language of your script doesn't matter. Just use what you love, what you want to use, anything. Be creative or not, do what you want. And I need to define two types of data. The first type is the referential data. It's the data that we import at the creation and that doesn't change much. For example, it will be um, the product catalog or the price um, configuration or even a geographic referential. It's not very changing because the very changing one is the second type of data, it is business data. That's the one we want to import on the fly that's specific to your use case and with links to other business data and referential data. For example, it will be accounts, contract opportunities, everything. We want to import that specific. And that's what we'll focus on. One little technical consideration, um, import, export are mainly based on Texas plugin that we augmented with uh, our use case. So thanks Fabian for working for a strong collaboration on this plugin to improve it. And thanks to this plugin, there's a lot of things you don't have to worry on your script because it's unled by the plugin. For example, links between record of the same export doesn't have to worry about it. Don't have to worry about a specific order to import. You just specify the order and then it's done. Don't have to worry about sorting things or anything. And also you can exclude field is easily and set a dynamic ID per object easily. We'll talk about dynamic ID in some minutes. And these last three are in the data plan. Data plan is like the config file for uh, the import export plugin. Two more things. We'll talk about source org. This is where the data is and the target org is where we want to import the data. Yes, data model. There's not that much, that many objects in it, but a lot of relationship, a lot of links, a lot of things on it. So it looks complex, but I want to show you that there's three main data here. In green, we have the referential data, that's geographic referential or product. In blue, we have the entry point. We'll talk about it just after that. It's, for example, the account, and gray, it's all the rest of the business data that is linked to our entry point. So what is the entry point? The entry point is basically what you, the record you give to the script to say, to be the starting point of what you want to import. For example, in our case, it's account. The idea is to import I is to import everything related to this to this entry point using parent to child relationship and lookup relationship and also if possible the entire hierarchy of the entry point. We call a cluster every record we want to import. So that's a cluster. At the top you see that we have a top hierarchy account, that's our entry point, and under it there is a lot of accounts related to it and different objects related to it. So the idea is to import everything just by specifying the top accounts. Dynamic ID. I told you this word previously. What is it? It's basically just a, conc a concatenation of fields of a record that make it unique. Because in production, you have, for example, an account with a lot of fields and a Salesforce ID, which is unique. 
But if you import this account in a sandbox, every field will stay the same, but the cell force ID will change because it's not kept. So we want a way to still be able to refer to this account even without the cell force ID. Why? That's just what I said. And for example, for products, we can just concatenate the name and the product code to make it unique. And if you have an external ID, it's even easier to, to choose it. OK. Theory about the art part. We saw our data model that there's a lot of links between records and between records of different object and between records of the same object. So the theory is to first import without links because you can't link to something that doesn't exist yet. And then we import uh, with the link. For example, for the account, we have only one link, which is the parent ID of a child account to a parent account. So we first import the parent account and then we can import all the child with the lookup so it uh, refer to an existing record. For contact, if we have, for example, contact referring to themselves, to other contact, we first import every contact without the lookup, and then we, we import with the lookup so it can match existing records. That was easy, now that's the hard part. Uh, Revenue Cloud, I don't know if you use it, it's like CPQ, billing, that's only a small part of it. Um, the idea is that yes, it's complex. Yes, uh, it's not really easy, but you can still manage it. You just need to do it multiple steps. Think about uh, without link with links. Maybe sometimes you need to change uh, status on the fly, but at the end it works. Yes, for just six objects we need 11 export imports. But as I said, it is possible and that's the that's main Things I want to tell you is that yes, you can do it. Yes, GDPR. I know s some people are big fan of it. Some aren't. Um, quick, quickly, with different way to handle GDPR, we can import with the real data. <coughs> Sorry, and then just run a batch to anonymize it when it's in the target org or we can export it, anonymize it on local, and then import it on the target org. Uh, maybe the best way is to do everything on the cloud so the developer never see anything. GDPR guys are happy, everyone's happy. That's fun. More tips because more tips I give you, the easiest it will be uh, for you. First, We'll talk about restricted pick list. Um, every org is evolving. Sometimes you have a pick list. You think you have nice values on it, but two, two weeks later, the business wants to change the value, and it's a res restricted pick list, and it changes and it changes again and again. Some unrestricted pick lists become restricted. So you can't import um, record with a value of a pick list. Not allowed, not allowed. So for that, we developed two little uh, plugins to unrestrict every restricted pick list and then restrict them back after we imported everything. S another thing I want to, to tell you is that sometimes you can't create a record with specific value and specific field. For example, you can't order, you can, you can create order with status activated. So the idea is just to dynamically change it to something allowed, and then to update it to the value you want. And last but not least, um, audit fields. You may know that you can specify audit field when you insert a record, if you have a checkbox on your profile saying that, yes, you can do it. So you can do it. But don't forget to exclude this audit field if you update uh, this record, so you don't try to update them because no one is allowed to update audit fields. Yes, example of scripts, 
Step by step. I talked about the data plan, and now you're gonna see how it looks like and how, it, how easy it is. First, I said you can specify excluded fields. You can specify excluded fields for every record or for specific records. For example, that's the most of the audit fields that I never want to import because I never care about it. And maybe some fields that exist in multiple, uh, multiple objects that you never want because it's useless. <laughs> Talked about dynamic ID. And the thing is just you have to specify the object and the field you want to concatenate to create your dynamic ID. That's, that's it. Nothing, nothing more to, to specify. Really easy. And that's how you configure which record, which object you want to export and import, and the order of it, and if you want to add some filter to it. For example, we said at first we want to import accounts that are the top hierarchy, so we can take only parent ID, account with parent ID equal null, and then we take with parent ID different of null, so we have every child accounts. For contact, as I said, uh, first we can exclude uh, the lookup to other contact, and then don't exclude this lookup, but only exclude the create date um, audit field. And now we're gonna, next slide will be very quick. You'll be able to see them later, but the main idea is that there's three parts of the script. First, a preparation part, then an export part, and at the end we finish with the famous import part. It's basically just using every tips I gave before in, a, in order, and with your specific data model. Now that's the fun. Let's, if it works. I don't know where I am. Let's watch the demo. Okay, so yeah, no, a bit blurry, but we still at the beginning, we run a script, we call it with our ID, an account ID, then we're starting the preparation part, so we check our connection to target org and source org. <coughs> and now we're just um, bypassing things. And here we are started already to export every object we specified in the data plan. So you can see here that the output of the script, that's all the file that we created on the local computer. And at the top, it's a screen I go through when we when it run. So export is finished. We modified a local file dynamically to change the uh, status of the order. And now we're starting to import it again. The total video was like six minutes. I spilled up a bit for the presentation. But generally, it's just take between five and 10 minutes to import lots of accounts and lot, lots of uh, record related to it. So it's really fast, just time to short coffee break and uh, you're done, you have all the data in, uh, in your production and in your sound data from production in your sandbox. The importing is finished and now we are starting to restrict back big list and stop bypasses and we launch the GDPR batch to make GDPR people happy. So, just finishing to stop bypasses. And we are an assigning permission set and things. And now it's finished. So it was pretty quick. If you continue, I want to tell you that it's always possible to improve your script by using it, by being in the team that, that use it. Here are some example of what I can do to still improve it. But the main idea is just, there's no limit, just type, have fun, and keep improving everything. 
I've talked way too much, so now it's, uh, it's your time to talk, and uh, I think you need to hands up so you have a, a mic and everything. <laughs> yeah, I think the, we need a mic on the front row. Thanks for the presentation. Thanks. Here we come. Uh, you talked about the GP DDPR uh, script you were using. Uh, what's the strategy you you use? Well, I, I just used um, we used the first um, first strategy, just a batch, because we already had a batch that we run on our sandbox when we refresh them. So I when? just used the same one and it okay. changed the GDPR fields, uh, so like account, uh, name, emails, phones, to random things. Okay. And the thing about uh, GDPR is nice, but make sure that your dynamic ID doesn't um, depend on GDPR feed, because if you change it randomly, it won't match anything. Yeah. That's the only issue. <laughs> so, thank you very much for the presentation. Uh, and uh, to make GDPR people really happy, because we know them they are usually boring. RSSC, hello. Uh, do you, uh, for when you work your data, I think it's local uh, on your computer, uh, do you make sure that uh, they are uh, destroyed? Uh, yes, everything. Yeah, I think it's I just shut down the video a bit short, but at the end of the script, I just delete everything and put everything back as it was uh, locally. Okay, really hurry to see that in a nice comment in the plugin. <laughs> yeah, soon. Yes. Thank you for your talk, and I understood your way of preparing test data for your developers is by exporting real data. We also heard that that might bring additional challenges in terms of legal requirements like GDPR. So why not create test data from scratch? Because it will only um, solve one of the three uh, issues. Why not use uh, framework and a library to create test data from scratch, like Snowfakery. Because, um, yes, it's, it's a good, good point to, um, to test your dev directly in Sandbox, but you won't be able to try real-world use case. For example, if you have a, a bug in production on a specific invoice, and you have three different ways to solve it, but you don't know which way works, and if you would try one way, it would just mess up your prod. So you can just import the data in your sandbox and try each, each ways with the real data. So if it works, it will work in prod without destroying your production by trying random things. I don't know if it uh, answers your question. Is there any more questions? Yes. I think you, you need a mic. Uh, first of all, thank you for the presentation. Um, I had just one uh, question about uh, you know the dynamic IDs that you're building. Um, uh, are they persisted? I mean, uh, uh, they are persisted in a custom field that you create on the objects for that purpose, or uh, they are uh, just they dynamic? Are, they are dynamic and totally magic. It doesn't impact your data model. It's never uh, in any Salesforce org. It just uh, locally on the script, in the, the logic of the script and of the plugin to import things. So we, we don't need to create any fields on uh, any objects or anything. It's not a dump ID, it's really dynamic ID on the fly. Okay, so you, when you mean by in the fly, uh, they are persisted, persisted in the, um, the file that you're generating uh, in, yeah. the, in the way, uh, in it's your process of importing and exporting things? Yes, it's only specified and persistent in the data plan. So in the data plan, you specify exactly which field you want to concatenate to make the dynamic ID. But uh, that's it. You never import it physically. OK, thank you. That was so clear. All right, thank you very much for attending this presentation. I have one last thing to say. 
Yes, there it is. So again, that's my thing. If you want to contact me, ask me question or anything. And if you, you want to have fun with a nice DX for developers, new challenges, nice scripts, join us at Aviv. We'll be pleased to, to have you with us. You can contact uh, me or any HR. There is uh, Agnes in the room if you want to talk to her. So thank you very much again.